Hey folks, in this edition of the R107 series, I wanted to take a look at some things that we love about these cars and some things that we just uh, aren't so crazy about. Uh, if you're a fan of the page or you're here looking at this video, you probably either own one of these cars or maybe you're thinking about owning them either soon or someday. So I thought I'd go through and show you some of the things that I like about the car and there are a few things that I just can't stand about this car. So let's get into it. Things that we love about this car is that, well, first of all, they're drop dead gorgeous cars. There's a reason why they're featured in movies and TV shows. And that's probably the biggest attraction to the car. Another thing is they actually have a decent amount of storage space. Unlike a lot of other cars of the era, like a Corvette or especially something like an MG or something like that, you can actually fit groceries in this car. You can use it as an everyday car if you want to. Uh, besides the trunk, you also have the space in the back if you don't put kinder seats in. It's, you can, I mean, you can put five or six bags of groceries back there. Um, and probably the thing that a lot of R107 owners don't think about, uh, but Mercedes-Benz cars of this era were just built like tanks. They actually called this car the, iron, the um, armored car and there's a reason for that. It's hard to really explain what these cars feel like but if you've ever driven one, if you've ever owned one, not just an R107 but any Mercedes-Benz from the 1950s up through the 19, early 1990s, they're, they're really a special car and just in the way they're put together. And probably the last thing that I personally love about the car is that it rides decently. Uh, a lot of sports cars ride like a buckboard wagon, but this car, by the time the R107 came around, they weren't looking so much into sport as they were into more of a GT car, meaning it can handle, but it has a good ride as well. And for most of us, for what we actually want to do with a car, we don't want a car that handles well, but we don't want our teeth knocked together every time we go over railroad tracks, and the R107 delivers both of those things. It can go around a corner like a sports car, but it's not really a sports car. It's a comfortable touring car. Okay, first thing I'm putting the top down, you have to make sure that you have your tool. There are actually two tools our car only has one, but there are actually supposed to be two tools. They're supplied in a pouch, which you keep in the glove compartment. Take this tool, place it into the top mechanism, twist it. Same for the other side. Now, Inside the car, in the rear seat area, we have to take this handle, rotate it down. Use this to unlatch the top. That's a safety mechanism. Now our top comes up in the back. We're not done yet. Now rotate this handle further we've released our top boot. Now that our the top is up and our boot is released, pull the boot up. Now, your top and everything can go into the top storage area. Here's another thing that's a little strange. You have this good sized trunk but to fit the spare tire in here, they've let it intrude into the trunk area. Here's something that absolutely drives me crazy. You notice the seat hits the body of the car right here. I'm only 5'9", and I have the seat all the way back bumping into this thing. I can't imagine if I were six foot plus. There's no real reason for it. Why did this happen? Why did they do it? That's a look at some things that I love about the car and a few things I really don't like about the car. 
I'm sure if you own one of these cars, you can attest to maybe some of these things and probably a lot more, both on the positive side and on the negative side. So uh, if you want to continue the discussion, please feel free to leave a comment. If you like what I'm doing here, hit that thumbs up button and subscribe, and I will see you at the next one.